Hello, thank you for joining us for today's Staying Connected. I'm Pastor Roy. We've been talking about the Sermon on the Mount, often referred to as the greatest sermon ever preached, and it comes to us from Matthew chapter 5. It contains what has been referred to as the Beatitudes. I've often heard that referred to as the attitudes that ought to be. That's the attitude of those who are a part of the kingdom of God. It's, it's characteristics of those who live in or seek to live in the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven. It begins with uh, Jesus speaking to the multitudes, and I'll read the first uh, four verses for us. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, and he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So last week we began with the question of what is a quality of those who uh, are believers or followers, followers of Christ? And we offered up several suggestions like joy and peace and hope and all those things. But Jesus says here that, that, that the kingdom of heaven is first of all characterized by poverty of spirit. Or those who live in the kingdom of heaven is, are characterized by a poverty of spirit. And that is seeing the depth of our sin and our need for God. And so the second beatitude is blessed are those who mourn, for they, sh they shall be comforted. You might hear that verse read at funerals or at a graveside service, referring to those who grieve the loss of a loved one. Uh, that is appropriate, but I don't think it's the context. If, if you think about what came first, it was poverty of spirit. It was one real, it's when we realize the depth of our need for God because of our sin. And so the second proverb is directly connected to it, and that is, blessed are those who mourn. It's, it's a reference to, of course, any form of mourning, but it's probably more directed toward those who mourn their sin or mourn the sin of the world, who, who are grieved by the way sin and death impacts the world today, and how sin is impacting human life and, and our experiences every day through greed and pride and sexual immorality and all the ways in which our brokenness is demonstrated in the world and leads to further brokenness. And those things ought to lead us to, to grieve, to, um, to be saddened, to, for our hearts to be broken. Broken over the sin that we see in the world in general, but, but as specifically, mourn and be broken over our own sense of sin and, and brokenness before God. We, we also, it also says that we will be comforted, comforted. The word there is, per, is parakleto, which comes is a Greek word that means to console or to comfort or to reinsure. So if you uh, think about the word that is Jesus used for the Holy Spirit, he said the comforter will come. That's the word parakletos which is a personal pronoun type word that refers to a person who comforts. So we're, we're comforted through others in the body of Christ and our friends in our time of grief and sorrow. We are comforted, but we also find comfort through the word. But we also, I think, the, the comfort that brings transformation as a part of the, through the kingdom of God is the comfort that comes through the gospel of Jesus Christ that is implemented to us by the person of the Holy Spirit, the parakletos. So comfort comes to us through the word, but the healing type of uh, comfort comes to us through the Holy Spirit. 
So if you grieve, I pray that you receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit who also comforts us through His Word and comforts us through one another. But we are also called to grieve our own sin and, and to be comforted by the gospel, the gospel that promises us forgiveness and the hope of eternal life and the, the work of God in our lives for, uh, for all of this life on earth and for all of eternity. So I hope you will receive comfort uh, as we have considered that second beatitude, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. I want to remind you that next Sunday, the first Sunday in September, we'll be celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. I want to encourage you to stop by the office and pick up your communion set so you can carry it home. And as if you're unable to be with us next week, you can uh, participate in our live streaming service where we will uh, participate in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. If you are unable to come to the office to pick those up, call the office and let us know and we'll have someone d deliver them to you. So again, I uh, hope you'll join us for worship on Sunday morning at 1030. Uh, we are practicing social distancing. We are encouraging masks and uh, hand sanitizing and social distancing as you sit in, in the congregation. But I hope you'll join us for worship. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the day that you've given. Lord, thank you for the comfort that your word brings to us. We also thank you for the comforter, your Holy Spirit, that applies the comfort of your word to our hearts, bringing transformation. So, Father, we thank you for your kingdom. We ask it to come to fulfillment within us as it is in heaven. In the name of your Son, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hope to see you Sunday. Have a great weekend. God bless you. Bye-bye.